long before Hannibal crossed the Alps, long before Mithridates fought his wars against Rome, and long before Augustus Caesar founded the Roman Empire, one powerful and influential Greek general crossed over the Adriatic Sea from Epirus in modern-day Greece and Albania, along with an army of 35,000 men, to do battle against the fledgling Roman Republic. He brought with him 20 war elephants, 4,000 highly trained cavalry, and tens of thousands of Greek hoplites. This was no mere mercenary commander. It was Pyrrhus, the king of Epirus, a second cousin of Alexander the Great, and one of the last great Greek military commanders of the ancient world. Pyrrhus committed everything to his campaign, his legacy, his fortune, his reputation, and his kingdom. He sought to defeat Rome once and for all, and ensure continued Greek dominion over the Mediterranean. Pyrrhus had been born in around 318 BC, as the heir to the throne of the Molassians, one of the Greek tribes of Epirus, a state situated to the northwest of the traditional heartlands of Greece. He was a second cousin of Alexander the Great, who had recently conquered much of the known world to the east. When he was two years old, Pyrrhus' father had been dethroned and later killed. Subsequently, Pyrrhus spent most of his formative years in the court of the Taulantians, one of the largest Illyrian tribes to the north. He was restored to his throne briefly in 306 BC, before he was banished again by Cassander, one of Alexander's generals who now warred over the empire following Alexander's death. Pyrrhus went east and fought in the cataclysmic conflict known as the Wars of the Diodarchy between Alexander's successors in Egypt, Syria and Asia Minor. After years of military service where he gained extensive experience, he forged a political alliance with another of Alexander's generals who had claimed Egypt, Ptolemy, who in turn helped him to reclaim the crown of Epirus, which he did in 297 BC. Pyrrhus spent the next years solidifying his rule in Epirus, while simultaneously seeking to expand his influence to the neighbouring states. During the previous decades, the Romans had also been gradually expanding their influence to encompass the entirety of the Italian peninsula. The coastlines of southern Italy had long been home to Greeks, who first settled the area known as Magna Graecia in the 8th century BC, and brought with them Hellenic civilization. They lived in a multitude of city-states, stretching all along the coastline, and as the years went by, they grew extremely rich from trade. By 280, the Romans came up against them at the city of Tarentum, one of the most powerful city-states, and one that had connections across the Adriatic Sea in Epirus. After envoys arrived at his court, offering him the loyalty of Magna Graecia if he would support them in their war against the Romans, Pyrrhus travelled south to Delphi to consult the oracle. He was encouraged to go, and soon afterwards, with the advantage of his twenty war elephants, his phalanxes, and his swift cavalry, he soundly defeated the Romans at the Battle of Heraclea in 280 BC, although he did lose some of his best troops in the Malay. In the aftermath, several tribes and other Greek cities joined Pyrrhus, and he offered the Romans terms, which characteristically they outright rejected. It was the first time the Romans had ever been tested in battle against such a powerful enemy, but they forged a new army nonetheless, and went to battle again at Asculum after Pyrrhus moved north towards Rome. The battle was a victory for Pyrrhus, but an extremely costly one. During the fighting, he lost many of his best officers, and he was forced to head southwards again to regroup. Famously, he is later said to have commented on the battle, If we are victorious in one more battle against these Romans, we shall be utterly ruined. It is from this semi-legendary battle that the term Pyrrhic victory originates, indicating an extremely costly victory. In 278, Pyrrhus received an offer to become ruler of the city of Syracuse on the coast of Sicily, one of the most powerful Greek cities in Italy. They were besieged at the time by the Carthaginians, but he lifted the siege in the same year. Soon, all of Sicily besides the Carthaginian stronghold of Lilibaeum came under his control, but he alienated the Sicilian Greeks so much through his harsh rule that they afterwards made common cause with the Carthaginians against him, and he decided to withdraw from Sicily entirely. By 275, Rome had conquered every Greek city in Italy besides Tarentum, and after another inconclusive battle at Beneventum, Pyrrhus abandoned Italy altogether. He went to war again almost immediately upon returning to Epirus, seizing the kingdom of Macedon and moving further south to extend his influence to the rest of Greece. At the city of Argos in 272, where Pyrrhus had entered to support one side of a political dispute, his army became trapped in the winding city streets, 
and he became embroiled in brutal street-to-street -street combat with the defenders of the city. Legend has it that while Pyrus did battle with one of the Argive soldiers, the young man's mother, watching from a window above, threw down a roof tile into the back of the general, paralysing him instantly and leading to his decapitation by an enemy soldier. Despite the indignity of his death, during his life, Pyrrhus represented the last great chance of the Greek world to thwart the growing power of Rome in the Mediterranean. His wars in Sicily laid the foundations for the impending cataclysmic conflict between Rome and Carthage, known as the Punic Wars, after which Rome would become the greatest empire the world had ever known. Pyrrhus never suffered a significant military defeat until the moment of his death. Hannibal himself, the great Carthaginian general of the Punic Wars, was hugely influenced by him and placed him second only to Alexander in greatness. Pyrrhus wrote many works on military strategy that are thought to have greatly influenced other leaders in the years after his death. Unfortunately, these have all become lost over time, so we can never fully know what they contained. Despite his apparent restless nature, roaming from country to country for much of his life, Pyrrhus of Epirus is generally regarded as one of the greatest military strategists and battlefield commanders of all time. Thank you.